as you know, um, the world has changed drastically in just two weeks. It's kind of crazy how much it's changed and processing all of that change is really important. Um, having some kind of creative outlet is really huge. Um, I really like drawing for that creative outlet. I'm gonna give you a whole different range of uh, ways to do that. Um, so uh, we're gonna look at a bunch of different tools you could use. Um, and you really wanna make sure that both for, you know, if you have students and you're an art teacher or if you're just uh, even a non-artist, I really believe that art is useful even if you're really bad at it. I know that some people are afraid of drawing um, and, you know, they feel like they can't draw, but understand that um, I can't sing, but I still love singing. So it doesn't slow me down at all, um, you know, and you still get something out of it. It's fun, it's expressive. This is really an important thing to understand you know, some people don't really understand art and are afraid of drawing, but um, I think it's really important to just do it anyway. I know that when I visited Japan, everyone sings. I mean, karaoke is just part of the culture there, and they sing loudly, and, you know, they sing sometimes terribly, but they have a lot of fun doing it, and we want to take that same mentality and apply it to drawing for sure. Um, so uh, I'm going to show you a couple tools you could use, um, and some advice. So uh, here's just a quick look at some of the projects that I am going to incorporate uh, for some students at home. This is a lot of different stuff, um, but uh, you know, it's a bunch of different ideas. Um, I like giving students choice. I like having choice myself when I'm a student. So figure drawing is something you could always do anywhere. Um, I love figure drawing. Um, you know, uh, and if you can't find anyone else to draw, you could always draw yourself. A self-portrait is terrific. Um, Zen tangles, of course, are a nice mindful exercise. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, you can see an example of a digital uh, Zen tangle on the bottom uh, right of the screen. So these are Zen tangles that students made. Um, perspective drawing, uh, just drawing, you know, architecture in the house, drawing your room. Uh, mandalas, we'll go over that. That's an easy, fun, kind of mindful activity. Um, you know, mixing acrylic paint with drawing and drawing with paint is fun. or basically any materials you have. One of the fun things is that, you know, being stuck at home, you're forced to be a little bit more creative in your materials. Um, so use that, you know, like, you know, draw with lipstick, draw with what any material you have available. Um, you know, you could use sewing, you could use anything to draw. Um, creating uh, mural designs is kind of a fun idea. I really believe in sketchbooks. I mean, I use my sketchbook every day. Um, and I think that's uh, something that I often understand how I feel more from looking at how, what I drew in my sketchbook than um, what I think myself. We'll also talk a little bit about code drawing. Um, and then Illustration Friday is, um, I, I don't know if you guys have heard of this, but Illustration Friday is a free resource. So it's put out by illustrators. Every week they give you a theme. Everyone shares their drawings um, and comments. And it's professional illustrators as well as amateurs. Um, so everyone does the same theme each week and you get to see everyone's work. Um, and then e-comics is a really good one. Uh, e-comics is a fun, um, you know, my students love doing comics. I like doing graphic novels and things like that. And sort of uh, telling a story with drawing is always helpful. And uh, of course, artist trading cards. So uh, I see Jeannie Bjork is in there. We just did, um, uh, we did a little exchange this year with our AP classes, which was so much fun. Um, you know, when in doubt, just make a bunch of gifts for other people, you know, make your uh, small artist trading cards and share them with other people. It's a good way to sort of connect in this weird new world. Um, so uh, here's some starters. So when we're talking about digital drawing, one of the things, these are just questions that I always present before we talk about the actual apps and things like that. Um, so uh, these are important questions to ask. So price versus quality. So I'm going to give you a bunch of free tools. Obviously, when you're using free tools, you might not have the best tools available. So I'm gonna give you low cost tools and free tools, but you wanna consider, you know, do you wanna pay for something? Uh, does it give you more privacy? What are you gonna get? Um, these are important uh, things. And, and really there's a lot of great tools out there that are low cost and free. So that's the good news in terms of drawing. Um, and then format, like what devices are you working with? Are you on an iPad? Are you on a desktop computer? Are you on a Chromebook? That's really important because, you know, Chromebooks are going to be a little bit more uh, limited. There's some tools that are great, uh, but you're not going to have the full range that you would have somewhere else. Um, 
I use all of these things, so I will help you uh, navigate that a little bit. And then, of course, there is vector versus raster. So this is something we talked a little bit about uh, in Rich's session. Um, so you know, whether you're doing uh, vector art or raster art, you know, pixel-based art, um, that's going to be an important based on which program you might want to use. Um, and exporting the art, you know, uh, what are you doing with the art? Do you want it to be a big poster that ends up on the wall of something, or do you want it to be uh, stay in the digital world, or do you want it to become an animation? So all of those things are important to consider. And then when you pick these apps, you also want to consider support. I mean, like what resources are there uh, to help you? And, uh, you know, what if you get stuck? There's tons of great tutorials online, but, you know, make sure that you're using a program that has tutorials available. Okay, so here's a couple of um, the drawing programs. Um, let me just, uh, looks like a few more people in there. So these are uh, the four favorites, I think, um, traditionally. So there's Adobe Photoshop, and then they have a version um, called Photoshop Sketch that is uh, free-ish. It's, you know, one of those apps that is free, um, and then you can have paid add-ons. Um, and then uh, the vector version of that is Adobe Illustrator and Illustrator Draw. So obviously, I worked as an Adobe Photoshop teacher for 10 years and um, I created all the illustrations for my book in Photoshop. So like this is where I started. Um, and then the new favorite in town un unquestionably is Procreate. Um, a lot of people are using Procreate. My students love that app. It's pretty inexpensive, $10 is not, not too bad to pay for an app uh, that has uh, so much versatility and it works really well on the iPad I find. Um, and uh, then uh, Clip Studio. So uh, Clip Studio has a bunch of fans out there. Um, and then that also allows you to export movies as GIFs, which is nice. Procreate also uh, records your process, which is really interesting. So those things are fun. And then uh, the fourth one would be uh, Autodesk Sketchbook. Um, so this one does PSDs for Macs, PCs, and iOS as well. So these are the big four drawing resources that have always been there. Uh, so let's look at the couple popular free options. So uh, Photoshop Sketch, um, as I mentioned, is uh, one of those free-ish apps that is, um, so it's free, but it allows you to um, add on uh, elements with a cost. I like ZenBrush. Uh, ZenBrush 2 is something that works pretty well. Um, not too bad. Google Drawings, uh, for anyone that isn't an artist, Google Drawings might be a good solution for you because it's a, a Chrome extension, so it obviously works on the Chromebook. You could actually do some vector things in there, which is nice, and it adds right into everything on the, the G Suite. Um, and then I really like Sumo Paint. This is my favorite of the free ones. Sumo Paint's free, uh, it's simple, it's easy, um, and it's pretty well organized. Um, so this is what I use. All of my students are now using Chromebooks. The school su supplied them. Um, so this is certainly something I'll take advantage of. And then Paper by 57. I loved Paper. It was one of my favorite apps. Um, and it got bought out by WeTransfer. So like they just kind of retooled the program. So uh, it's sort of in the process of changing. So we'll kind of see where it goes with that. Um, all right, so let's look at some um, actual projects. Um, so again, I'm going to show you a variety of things. I kind of retooled this for the presentation I was going to give at NAEA uh, in Minneapolis, uh, which I'm sad I'm not there right now, but um, I re retooled everything so that you could actually use it at home. Um, cool. All right. So I really uh, believe in just drawing journals. Like I use the sketchbook every day. I have a closet full of, I don't know, 157 sketchbooks or something like that. Um, at any point in time, you know, I have a sketchbook that I'm drawing in. So like the traditional sketchbook and then, you know, using digital art to have a digital version of that um, is really helpful. So you can see like that is uh, a lot of times um, I will start with a traditional drawing and then either take a photo of it and scan it and then work digitally after that. That's the example that I have on the left side there that says love, that's a drawing that I did in my sketchbook and then brought it in. And for a lot of the, um, uh, the artwork for uh, the book, um, I did that as well. So 
um, I would start with a traditional drawing and then bring it in and uh, and then add uh, digital elements and kind of retool it in Photoshop. The other two examples are actually done by students. Um, the middle example is actually a self-portrait example. This is from the book itself. I talk about doing digital self-portraits. I like um, leaving elements out, so being very selective about what you're choosing to draw. So this is a student that left out her face. She left her eyebrows in, but she left out her face, which is kind of interesting. And then the other thing is like, you know, draw what you enjoy, what you like. So like the, the all the way on the, the right side is an example of the flash. Um, and, uh, you know, this is done by a student in class when he was just playing around with the tools, like using, uh, that was actually done on paper, I believe. Um, so I watched him kind of create it. And this was like his first drawing that he was just learning how to layer the colors. So, you know, have fun with it. Um, having fun is an important element of art. Let's never forget that. Um, okay, so let's look at a specific project. Uh, here's just like a really simple um, project for anyone that hasn't done that much digital art. I put up this short tutorial that I filmed this morning. Um, so this is using Procreate uh, to draw a digital mandala. Now, if you don't have Procreate, there's other programs that do the same sort of thing. Uh, I like using Morphe app too. Morphe is another free app. It's uh, primarily for augmented reality and 3D printing. And actually you see my Steam Power logo there that's 3D printed, that was created in Morphe. So that also has the same feature. Um, and I draw on that as well. Um, so it's creative and it supports social emotional learning. Um, and let's take a look at this tutorial that I filmed. So I'm hoping you guys could hear it. And I'm hoping that it loads. Let's see what we get. See, this is one of the other problems that any teacher knows they're kind of running into now is that the loading, especially like a Google Classroom I was on there this morning, and it's going very slowly. <laughs> So like loading anything and using Zoom as well has definitely slowed down uh, because of the volume. Just give me a thumbs up if you guys could hear the audio on that. Oh no, okay. So I will re-explain what I was saying there. Um, so uh, if you want to create a digital mandala, uh, you just need to turn on your assisted drawing um, and it actually will give you a line and then it will um, allow you to pick out of four different options and you have the radial balance. So whatever you draw in any quadrant will mirror radially. So I start with a darker color and I like to use the wet brushes. Um, so the wet brushes have a more artsy look. Basically, you just, I always suggest that you play around with different things and see what you like best. So I always do like an underpainting first um, with a little bit of a thicker brush. And I like to layer when I do mandala. So like there's a traditional sort of mandala that uses straight lines but I like to actually layer it. So I'm using uh, an acrylic brush now and I'm changing the size up a little bit. Um, and it really just adds a texture layer more than anything else. It adds a little bit of a different um, feel. So I like to create something more uh, creative and I layer these mandalas with at least four or five uh, different types of brushes and sizes of brushes. And then here I'm changing to a third color and I'm doing um, the more standard brush so you can actually see it over top. Now, uh, all of these programs basically give you the option to literally create layers, but I always believe the laziest way of doing something is always a good way to do it. So I don't actually create the layers unless I need to. So these are uh, Kind of an easy technique. I, I don't like to do more than four colors on something like this because then it gets too noisy, but you can see that it's fairly easy to do. Um, and this tutorial is available 
I'm going to give you some resources at the end so you'll be able to hear the original sound. Um, but that gives you a pretty good sense of how to create it. So the other nice thing about um, Procreate is that it has a playback feature where you could watch the process and it creates a little movie for you. OK. So next up, we are going to go with digital drawing with code. So this is not something that people would typically think of when they're doing digital drawing. Um, but uh, digital drawing with code is actually a really nice way to kind of incorporate Steam. Now, I'm giving you the, the easiest possible way to do this. Um, so I'm using a program called code.org that was meant to teach people how to do code. Um, and there is an option here called the artist. Um, so there's definitely more advanced ways to do this, but this is something that is good for any level um, and works really well. So code.org is a free program. Um, and as a teacher, you could actually see what your students are doing in there, which is nice. You can give them a class code and watch what steps are on. That's really helpful. Again, this is in the book. Um, so uh, if you need more questions, and the video will be on um, my YouTube page as well, which I'll link at the end of this. I'll, I'll actually drop these in for you. Um, so this is a really easy way to do some digital drawing. This is, if you go on code.org, um, it's an hour of code project. Here is the actual project from my book with the step-by-step -step in introduction and all of the details. So this is the different projects we're using. Um, this is how you would sign on to help your students. Um, so you could get them all in or you get them out. So this is the artist. So it's actually asking you to uh, figure out the angles that uh, with the pencil there, draw and just drag and drop. You don't have to understand coding. Um, and then the 10 steps, which will take you, you know, 10 or 15 minutes. Um, by the last step, by the step 10, you're actually creating your own drawings and you could do something fairly advanced. You know, you could have the colors change, you could use functions, you could use um, repeats to kind of create a, a pretty cool looking digital drawing. So, you know, I use this in my upper level just to introduce coding so they understand uh, the uh, sentence structure of code works. Um, but Hour of Code, if you've ever used it, is really simple. It's the kind of thing that you really could play around with. Students take to it very quickly. I've done it with elementary, middle, and uh, high school students, and it's always successful. Um, and it's a really good kind of option for this distance learning scenario. Um, so that's actually a really good one. And then uh, augmented reality and drawing is another option. So uh, using AR, there's a bunch of different apps now for AR. Um, uh, there's Adobe has a new one called Aero. Um, as I mentioned, uh, Morphe has an app and now they have a, an app that's actually on the phone for AR that's really cool. Um, and there's a bunch of different tools. Uh, for uh, younger students, um, I always like to start with Quiver, which is just uh, digital coloring books where you could actually make them augmented. Um, and, uh, you know, Quiver is very simple. It gives you uh, areas to color and then you can actually watch it augment. So here's a quick look if you haven't seen this before. Um, so these are creative. They're kind of fun. Um, they have more, uh, like Quiver is a company from Australia that puts together these coloring sheets that have triggers hidden in them. You wouldn't be able to pick them out. Um, but here's like the Dragonfly coloring book page. And this is, you know, there's a, a bunch of different AR versions like this. I think Disney has one as well. But uh, I use Quiver because it's free. So there's a bunch of free resources. And as you see, you could actually see it augmented. And sometimes you could interact and actually play, like you could touch the dragonfly and it flies away, which is pretty cool. So a fairly simple um, way to start. Uh, here's a little look at um, one that I always use in my class called Dot Day. And um, I have an article uh, that will be coming out um, in School Arts Magazine on how to do this as well. So basically you're just coloring into the circle making your own creative dot and then you could actually see it in augmented reality. Really easy to do. Uh, you can go to Quiver Vision to download one of these. Um, they also have cool ones for math and science and other subjects. I actually created um, the cover of my book using Morphe app, which is uh, the app I mentioned before. So I drew it in my sketchbook. Um, I'll just go through this process really quick. Um, so this is taking a drawing and then actually making it into a design. Um, 
So Morphe again is three um, and it's pretty versatile. It does, uh, it now has video textures. You see on the screen, um, that is the digital version of the drawing. Um, so here's the original sketches. One of the interesting things is like, um, so that's the final sketch uh, that I kind of came up with fairly quickly. Um, and uh, using Morphe app, it's really easy to take something 2D and make it 3D or just draw it has that uh, feature in it and it kind of becomes quickly a, uh, a 3D print. So here are some other um, drawing and collaboration kind of things that you could do, especially in this um, time of uh, distance learning. These are nice ways to kind of draw and kind of take it to the next level. So as uh, a lot of our teachers around here, um, I'm sure Google for Doodle, uh, Doodle for Google rather is something everyone knows. I have all of my digital students do. You see an example on the bottom left there. Um, I'm also a really big fan of uh, the sketchbook project. So they're out of Brooklyn. Um, and uh, so they send you a sketchbook um, and uh, you could uh, send it back to them and they have the largest library of sketchbooks, um, I believe in the world. Uh, and they kind of bring it on a little tour of uh, the country and then sometimes the world, uh, but they have a digital uh, library, which is really helpful. And we'll actually take a look at that in a second. So um, about a hundred million teachers are now doing um, VR field trips. Um, and if you're doing a VR, VR field trip, like I, I did a VR field trip with some of my students to the Louvre the other day, um, you know, just like you would, if you went to the Louvre, it might be a good idea to stop and draw some of uh, what you're seeing and sort of respond to it. I like sketch notes a lot for this kind of thing. You don't need to have a necessarily a, a full drawing, um, but like it's, it's pretty helpful. Uh, there's another uh, cool program called 36 Days of Type. So each day you do a different letter um, and that's a kind of like a drawing slash design uh, element. And then you'll see lots of professionals and amateurs kind of do that. Um, and then Storycopes, um, you probably have heard of the Great Thanksgiving Listen. Um, so uh, that is a, a good option. Um, I have students record interviews with people. This is a really good option. Um, so I have them do a, a drawing of themselves and whoever they're talking to. But um, I'm definitely gonna do this with my students because you know, we're kind of living through history right now. Um, so it's really interesting to, uh, um, to actually you know, document some of what's happening for students to talk to their parents in this kind of uh, crazy time and document some of what they're going through and what their personal experience is and then add a drawing. Um, you know, Stuart Corpse will actually uh, if you want, um, they will actually put it in their library. Uh, and Sir Corpse is a non-for-profit. You may have heard they have a, a podcast on NPR that's very popular, but um, it, it, it kind of goes well with social emotional learning and mindfulness. And, you know, I have students add the drawing element in there. Um, and here is uh, one of the things I want to make sure uh, I add is the steam power challenge. Part of my book, the last part, is that I kind of put out a challenge to everyone to go out there and be creative and actually share some of the things they're doing. So I'm working with K-12 Art Chat this month um, and uh, we are uh, focusing on um, uh, a specific challenge, which is drawing an important person in STEAM. So we're doing illustrated quotes, uh, we're doing uh, portraits, we're doing both, basically uh, anything that um, kind of illustrates uh, an important person in STEAM with a, a quote is terrific. And you could share them out using that hashtag, ISTE STEAM Power in K-12 Art Chat. Um, and then here's a couple student examples uh, that I shared. So these are drawings that students did of famous artists um, and uh, STEAM people. So you have JR, the photographer, uh, who said art isn't supposed to change the world, but it can. Uh, uh, Tesla, of course, who actually worked down the street for me, um, of all the things I liked books best, uh, which is kind of a funny quote from him, and Jeff Koons as well. So these are um, things that actually my students created. I've been sharing them all month. I got a little sidetracked uh, because we um, 
got stopped from um, uh, actually being in class. Um, but uh, you know, here's the last advice I give you is to be kind, be creative, and change the world. Um, so that is uh, the little bit of sharing um, that I have. So we have some time left. Um, I have the the free version so of Zoom, which means that at the 45 at the 40 minute mark, uh, I suddenly disappear. But um, let me take some questions from you guys. Um, let me just unmute you for a second there. Actually, you know what? Uh, let me remute you. So if anyone has a question, you can um, unmute yourself and ask if it's a better idea. So I'm looking at the chat room here. Um, so I am uh, going to share this presentation, of course. Um, uh, so I will be uploading it to the NAEA app. Oh, uh, Nancy mentioned um, that the September issue of School Arts should be the one that features um, that article, which is terrific. So we have about 10 minutes left. I'll take any questions you guys have. Hey, Tim, I had a quick question. Um, yeah. On that Procreate Mandala that you were making. Right. How, how did you start it? I missed the beginning because uh, I was multitasking and looking at it. Not a problem. Yeah. So um, actually, I'll do it with you live. I'll do it live. Um, so did you start with? So the very, very, you know, I'm just opening a new canvas here. Um, so I'm creating a new canvas. So it has a nice feature. It's very easy. Um, so you just go to the gallery in the toolbar. Um, they have a drawing guide. So you need to turn on the drawing guide. Um, and in the drawing guide, you need to edit. And then you have an option for symmetry. And within symmetry, there's multiple options. I like radial because it kind of gives you the most um, but you could also just do uh, quadrants or horizontal or vertical. And then basically you hit done and play. That would be the next step. Yeah, it's pretty easy. And, and the kids have done really cool mandalas, I have to say. So it's not just for uh, younger students. It's for anyone. Cool. Thank you. Any other questions? Quick question. Yeah. Chromebooks, uh, a lot of what you've discussed and went through is primarily, I mean, there's a lot of app stuff, but we're all Chromebook users. And I just finished mm -hmm. up a, a webinar. What are your best bets for Chromebook access type programs? What have you experienced? Um, I, I really like that uh, the Sumo um, was my favorite of all the drawing apps on Chromebook. It's actually pretty versatile. You're able to do good things and you're able to get a more creative uh, workflow more than anything else. Google Draw is really rudimentary. I would avoid that unless you sort of have to. Um, and uh, I, I like my favorite so far, uh, although I, I believe um, some of the Adobe products are going to be available on Chromebooks, which is nice. And right. Jeannie just sh uh, shared some freeware as well. Um, so remember, I, I put out a bunch of stuff, so I'm going to share all of that those resources. So I, I made a list of 20 different drawing programs. Um, so you'll see some of that as well. Perfect. Thank you so much. Sure. No problem. Any other questions? Uh, Tim, I, yeah. Tim, I have a question. Sure. Um, someone that is not as digital. Okay. <laughs> uh, and with what we're doing now with this whole change of things here, um, what what is the what is the easiest thing that I can do to put out for my kids that I'll be under be able to understand to use and um, that'll make it easier for them and something as simple so we can get through and hopefully get back to school. And you teach the high school level, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I mean, like you know, especially in this time, you don't want to use any pay apps. You would want to go with something free. Um, that would be important just because who knows, uh, you know, being mindful of that sort of thing is really uh, necessary at this point in time. Um, so, I mean, like, you know, you could use something like Adobe Sketch, which is fairly simple uh, and it's free. Um, that would be pretty useful. Okay. 
And um, Adobe also just kind of released this big, they're making a push now for uh, non art teachers to use some of their tools. Um, so they kind of just released this big uh, bunch of uh, resources for everyone that makes it a little bit easier. Um, so okay. that should be even easier now than ever. Okay, cool. Hey, I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. So uh, before we go, I do want to just share um, one or two other resources. Um, so I'm going to just screen share one more time. So this is the uh, sketchbook project. Um, so this is the digital archive. I'm going to just write my name in to find some of the ones that I've done with students. So I do this as a art honor society. Um, each year we do a collaborative sketchbook and I reached an error, but there's a cat, so it's okay. Um, so <laughs> we, uh, and again, like this is a free resource that's online, so it might be a little overloaded. Um, so I'll show you one more time how to get there. So they have a digital library that you could find online. It has thousands of sketchbooks from artists uh, around the world, which is kind of a, a cool thing. Um, I have another follow-up question, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure, of course. So as far as drawing, I mean, I teach media as, as well. So, you know, when we're at school, we have the tablets, we have, you know, our uh, various, um, you know, implements for drawing. What do you find are the best bets for anybody that's not necessarily going to have a, a tablet or a pen tool? What would be your, I mean, obviously using your finger with iPads, we have kids don't have iPads. So if they're on right. a Chromebook, is there anything you would suggest possibly as an, as an alternate to having that, that pen implement in their hand drawing? Is it just, it's just a trackpad? I mean, it's kind of what we're dealing with here as well. So yeah, it could be really limiting. I understand. Um, yeah. So, I mean, like with my students and with, um, the Chromebooks especially, you know, it's going to be somewhat limited. But um, one of the things that I like about that, that free Sumo program is that um, it does allow you to um, get a, a more painterly feel. It has a, a variety of brushes that aren't touch sensitive, um, but they give the effect of being touch sensitive, which is nice. Um, right. So, I mean, that would be the, the best um, answer for right now. And again, um, I think all of us are going to be using these things a lot more. So, I, I, you know, it's only been a week of uh, online teaching for me. Uh, and they bring these, back, which is kind of interesting. So they do a lot. They're doing um, a free creative project this month where each day they send you a new prompt. And that's the kind of thing that's kind of fun for uh, this period of time. Um, Okay, it's a little weird, but yeah. So this is a, a mixed media sketchbook that you can see. So that is the sketchbook project. Uh, so we got two more minutes. Um, I do want to mention that uh, Trisha Fuglestad will be coming up next in our NAEA 20 free uh, webinar. And if anyone knows Trisha, she's amazing. So I'm sure it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and we have a host of other teachers uh, that volunteered to present this week. It's kind of phenomenal. Uh, we put this together in a couple days, so you know they're all totally amazing. Um, a lot of them are here watching today, um, and uh, the schedule is available on Twitter, uh, and a lot of people share it on Facebook and other places. Um, but again, just to clarify, this is not actually an NAEA event. It's kind of a grassroots thing that we put together, so kudos to all those teachers that threw together videos and presentations this week. It's really nice to be able to connect with you guys um, you know, I hope to have been at the conference today, um, as many of you, and hope to check out Minneapolis one day. Uh, but this is certainly uh, nice because in New York and I think in California and some other places, we are literally stuck in our homes. So it's really nice getting to be creative. Um, I will say for anyone that was interested in 